a couple of nights ago, I remember what my parents told me. I guess parents told their children this most of the times that the boogeyman's gonna come and get you. That what you fear the most is gonna happen. But I never really cared. I never believed in the boogeyman. I never believed that something's gonna grab my feet while I'm sleeping. And I'm never gonna, I never believed that my figures were gonna come to life and attack me. Why should I? Let fear get to you. Fear a lot of things when you get older. But I can understand it. A couple of nights ago, I went out with a couple of my friends because there was one of my friends going away party. He was he was leaving, leaving to the state. So we threw him a final party once and for all. Now. That now that now that he's gone, it's been really, really difficult. And he told us how much how much he was how much he was happy to have us in his life. But but the weird part was that when when he left, he took me to the side and told me. He's been having this strange occurrence at night. Now, my friends come to me when they have problems. And, because they know I'll listen. And get them some advice. He said this person has been coming into their room. And has been sleeping. Well, watching him sleep. And, just looked at him. He wakes up with scratches on his back. And half of his face covered in blood. He never gets a good look at it. And he mostly wakes up real quick and turns on the light every time he feels something burning on his back. He showed me the pictures. Yeah, he, he was right. Something was watching him. Because no cut could be that big and that long along the back. It didn't look like scratches. It looked like somebody was stabbing him slowly. Or using one of those knives that the doctor uses for surgery. He told me if I could do him a favor. I told him, of course, he wanted me and my friend to sleep at his house. Well, his old house. Get everything on video to see if he was going insane. And I agreed, and I told my friends to. They didn't mind. They really wanted to sleep over at his house. They never did, and then they really wanted to see what was going on at night. So later that day, I got my video camera, and I got waited for my friends. We went to my friend's house, and there was that two-story house. A green picket fence. A two-door garage. Walked in, and that beautiful aroma of cocoa, cocoa and chocolate chips filled the air. His wife came towards us and said, Would you like to have cookies and cocoa? And then, of course, it was cold. Being the month of December, so... We agreed. We got cocoa and cookies and we started eating. We started laughing about the good times, but we did. Now, she said she'll be gone and so would he. They're going to be staying in a motel. We agreed and said well, nothing will be damaged. We started setting things up. Started setting things up. And I went to his room first to see if everything was still in place. His bed was still there, queen size. And I had to say it's a nice bed. 
got a flat screen TV right in front of the bed. And pictures of him and his wife and his two kids. And I set up the camera there. I set it pointing towards the window in his bed. And good angle there too. And I walked towards the hallway and put a camera there. Towards his room and his old kids room. And I put one in the guest room because I was going to stay there. My friends were going to stay in the living room downstairs. And so, I basically had the up room, the upstairs to myself. And that night, everybody said goodnight to each other and set up all their cameras. And I set up my forest recorder right beside his bed. And I walked straight to the guest room. Now, I swear I heard voices coming from this room. Now, it I, it may have been sounding weird, but it, it sounded like... I know, right? I know, it sounds weird, but it, it sounded like that. It must have been my imagination. So, I got up and walked. I'm looking at his room. Everything seemed to be normal. Now, I was backing away out of his room. From the corner of my eye, I seen something move from his dresser. Now, I cut up the glance and I turned on the light. Nothing. My curtains were moving, and I went straight to the curtains, and the windows closed. Now, and that didn't startle me at first, but I still can't get out of my head. But and I wish that I never went into his room. And when I went back to my room, well, when I went back to the guest room, I fell asleep. I woke up as normally as I do, walked downstairs, and all my friends see me. They look shocked. And I, I laughed and told them what was funny. My friend came up to me and told me, dude, your face. I went straight to the bathroom and looked. I had a bloody handprint on my face. And I had no scratches on my back. But the hand didn't look like a hand. The fingernails were way, way too long. Man, it didn't even have a thumb. I looked at my video camera and there it was 333. The thing standing over me, the legs bent back, the spine was pointing out like spikes. God, what was it? What's creepy is that I walked straight to my camera and smiled. And then it disappeared and appeared back to me, touching my face. God, I, I, I couldn't sleep anymore. I haven't slept for three days because of that night. My friend has moved uh, to new people bought his house, and I still live in a shitty, shitty old apartment. God, I hear that voice every time I go to sleep now. I've been trying to go to sleep, but I can't. I close my eyes and hear that voice, and I wake up. 
I lost my job. Pretty sure I'm gonna be evicted soon. But it's not worth it anymore. I still can't get the image out of my head.